Welcome back. We are looking at 15 years after the Kargil War and the lessons learnt. And just before we went into the break, we were talking about the nature of civil military relations. And there are two issues here. One is the fact that for a variety of reasons, India still does not have the equivalent of a chief of defence staff or even a permanent chairman as far as the chiefs of staff committee is concerned. So, General Hasnain, I was making the point as the devil's advocate. Narayan Saab feels that integration is taking place. I said, no, the chiefs are like invisible men. What is your own you know, assessment now as an outsider? <laughs> as a <clears throat> result of the Cargill Review Committee 2001 onwards, uh, the integration process did start. And uh, I think by about the 15th of August uh, 2001 itself, we had, uh, we had uh, most of the aspects of the integration part of the staff particularly in place and a lot of delegation of powers as uh, uh, the former defense secretary just said. But having seen that, <clears throat> to get the whole thing going and the whole, to get the whole thing working was a great, greater challenge. Uh, thereafter, we haven't faced this kind of a challenge again. Maybe it happened in the, during of Parakaram again in 2002. Um, uh, that was perhaps uh, the reaction was a little different. The scenario was a little different. Now, since then, about 10 to 12 years down the line, I would say, yes, there has been an improvement. The chiefs are definitely being uh, consulted much more. The mechanisms for consultation are there. But that final, that final act of having a single point advice from a chief of the defense staff, that is still missing. And uh, you will agree that uh, in the absence of that, uh, individual uh, service interests, uh, service loyalties continue to rule the roost. And that's an important thing which we have to overcome now. Well, let me put it this way. As an analyst and someone who has been writing and commenting about this for many years and having also had the benefit of working with the <coughs> late Mr. K. Subramaniam, some of us have often made this point that this is a big gap. And there are many views on this, you know, the single point <coughs> that Atha has been talking about. Shekhar, what about you? You have been there as the single point, as the chief of the integrated defense staff. Do you think this needs to be reviewed and given the status of either a chief of defense staff or a permanent chairman as far as the chiefs of staff committee is concerned? How, how would you sort of respond? As I said in the beginning that lot has been done, but lot <coughs> needs to be done. And this will fall in the category of lot needs to be done. Uh, what has happened is that while the integrated defense headquarters is part of the MOD, uh, but ultimate decision is taken by the administrative wing of the Ministry of Defense. And that is where the armed forces have been saying, and rightly so, which Jata also <coughs> mentioned and you mentioned, that if the military wing headed by equivalent to the chiefs uh, is directly under the uh, Honorable Raksha Mantri, then I would say that decisions <coughs> of the warfare nature and decisions of these nature, uh, the services have a, will have a better say because they are technically highly qualified, they are the tactical people and that is that's the need of the hour. The, uh, you know, the dynamics of war have changed and I think that unless you have a, a single point responsibility who can coordinate along with the Ministry of External Affairs because it, when <coughs> will we, an external aggression turn into the internal war, it is very thin line and particularly from the sea yeah. being a naval man, being a sailor I would say that. So therefore that thin line that <coughs> needs to be identified where the intelligence, the MHA, the MEA are all, all are fuse. one in one group and that will happen only when the a CDS or a permanent chairman is. Well. Yogen sir, mm. you have been an observer of this not only as defense secretary, you were there as secretary general right. in parliament. Now there is one perception that the Indian politician is averse or has some kind of hesitation about the so called chief of defense staff, despite the fact that the chief of defense staff will not have any operational shall we say assets. But what is your own assessment sir, you have been there for so long. Is the reluctance coming from the <coughs> political side of the establishment? Is it from the civil services? I mean, you are part of the steel frame that is there the reluctance of the IAS. How would you sort of? Hey, uh, Uday, you must remember that we were all part of the deliberation which took place in the group of ministers. And the group of ministers had recommended the setting up and creation of a chief of defense staff. 
Now, when this went up to the Cabinet Committee on Security, at that level, it was not accepted. All the other recommendations of the group of ministers' reports were accepted except this one. I think there is a political reluctance to <coughs> accept this because of, uh, I suppose, the ex environment which they see all around the country in various, uh, na in the neighborhood especially. So there is a reluctance to have this, have this particular serious. Thing. Having said that, I would still uh, say that uh, the, all the three chiefs, as I have seen practically, have full access to the <coughs> defense minister. They give their views to the defense minister. And we have this weekly meeting in the defense minister's office where all the three chiefs come, the four secretaries come, the MEA comes. At that level, all the problems are thrashed out. Huh. So uh, this interface between the uh, three chiefs as well as uh, the minister, and the the minister is continuously there on a weekly <coughs> basis. And even otherwise, they are free to meet the defense minister. The uh, integration, uh, as I see it, has to take place at the integrated defense staff, which was set up. Entire planning, entire uh, money allocations, which they, they can propose the money allocations. The defense ministry is acting almost like a modem, uh, like a compu uh, to computer. Yeah, yeah. It is the interface, interface between the rest of the civilian government, which includes the finance ministry and the defense forces. So we put up whatever is finally <laughs> recommended by the integrated defense staff, pruned according to the budgetary allocations made, and then we put it up to the finance ministry for approval. Somewhere there will have to be an integration uh, with the uh, civilian bureaucracy or the civilian government. <coughs> because ultimately the money is flowing out of the coffers of the government, which yeah. is a civilian government. So, so I think that cannot be ignored. But this is an issue we will hopefully address again in this forum. But Atta, if I can turn to you. Kargil was all, as you said, about how the army and its young leadership was able to turn the tide. 15 years later, again, I'm asking a sort of internal kind of review question. We've seen the Indian Army having to address many challenges and I will not detail them. But you've been there, you know, when the action was, shall we say, most challenging. I mean, you got your hands dirty and your feet wet, if I may say so, in the valley and more. What is the challenge for the Indian Army today when we look at the proxy war, the internal dimension and the nature of the regional <coughs> strategic environment for the Indian Army? Well, uh, the situation is still mucky, I would say. And uh, the fact that uh, one of the major lessons actually which came out of the Kargil war was the fact that uh, our adversary on the other side can carry out the most irrational acts and uh, convert them into a rationalism, should I say. So when it, comes to, when it comes to carrying out intelligence reviews, your operational reviews, you've got to be aware of this aspect that you may have all kinds of ideas about what can be done. But in inevitably it happens that uh, there are three approaches and the fourth approach is always taken. So you've got to be fully prepared all the time, which is actually really allures to having your intelligence well in place. We've got uh, a proxy war continuing. It's going on for the last 25 years. And uh, dare I say that it's important for the adversary to continue having focus to make sure that uh, the proxy war is not forgotten by the international community, is not for forgotten elsewhere, and that within the valley itself there's a fair degree of passion and enthusiasm for it, which in the recent years we, seem, we have seen uh, is actually flagging. So an irrational act can come in any other time. Last year, if you remember, in the month of September, October sometime, we had these operations in an area called Keren, mm -hmm. uh, on the line of control. And a lot of people said this is Cargill 2. Well, it's good to keep calling things Cargill 2 because, you know, it keeps you alert. Uh, it was not Cargill 2 at all. Uh, it had different connotations. But that keeps you pepped up. And that's very, very important. Two other aspects which are very important for the Army as lessons from this and uh, for the future. One is the, the human resource management. We are short of officers today. Yeah. Hugely short of officers today. We have to get our act together and ensure that we make up this deficiency. And the second thing, the more important thing again uh, as a, in, in war fighting is your equipment. 
And we see that we are actually lagging behind on this completely. Our acquisitions are well behind. Uh, it's it's uh, over 25 years since we've had a new gun in our inventory. Ammunition, uh, we, are st uh, we are told that by 2019 only we'll be able to make up our full ammunition inventory by that time. So we've got problems. And these problems need to be addressed and addressed expeditiously. And they must be flagged. Yes. But on that note, Admiral Sinha, there's one area, you know, when we started discussing Cargill, <coughs> intelligence, you know, even Mr. Narayan spoke about the fact that there was inadequate coordination. And as I said, the word that often comes to mind is India was surprised. We were surprised in Cargill in 1999. India was surprised in 2008 in Mumbai when we had that attack. What again would be your shall we say assessment or appreciation of 15 years later is our intelligence apparatus better organized better managed is there more coordination as far as the exchange of information is concerned uh, the improvements have <coughs> taken place uh, we have the uh, intelligence committees at various uh, levels at you the created the dia, DIA under the ids the defense intelligence agency that is very much in place and very active and most of our signal intelligence is uh, through the through the DIA. But what is important is what do you do with that intelligence? Unless that intelligence is given to the user, it's very difficult to say that I have made use of this. So I would see that the at the level of state or at the level of uh, fighting formations, that integration is yet to take place. Where everybody is independently collecting information. It is a very not unverified, and you cannot act on those intelligences. So we need to address so We that. need to address this issue. The 1999 Cargill war was a defining moment as far as the subcontinent was concerned in, tame, in terms of shaping the strategic contours. India, <coughs> Pakistan and here I would also like to include the Chinese influence. The Pakistan army then under General Musharraf may have surprised India to a certain extent. But the determination and the restraint exuded by India under Prime Minister Vajpayee laid the foundation for India's emergence as a responsible and a credible power. The lessons learnt from Kargil are varied and a few have been internalized. But as our discussion had shown, major structural changes are yet to be addressed and one hopes that the Modi government will give this the highest priority and consideration in the next four or five years. Allow me to thank the panel, Admiral Sinha, General Hasnain and Mr. Yogendra Narayan. And thank you for watching Wide Angle. We'll be back again next week.